I'm gonna take a smart switch and make it smarter. Or maybe dumber, I'm not sure. You be the judge. Smart technology. I have a love-hate relationship with smart technology. So there's so many things that are good about it, so many things I love about it, but there's so many little quirky things that just drive me crazy. One of them is lamps. I have a lamp on each side of my couch and one on each side of my bed. And I like the way lamps look and the way they light the room. But a good example of quirkiness is I'm reading a book at night and my wife's asleep already, her lamp's off, my lamp's on, and I'm done. So now I have to dig through my phone and turn the lamp off or switch the lamp off and lose connection because it's a smart bulb or possibly yell across the room and say, hey Alexa, turn off the lamp. And now my wife's annoyed at me. So not really a good scenario there. So smart plugs, like this one here, they happen to have a button on the side of them that you can actually turn them on and off. So having that switch is great and all, but a lot of times it's behind the nightstand or in my case, under the couch. And it's not quite convenient to push that button. So I'm gonna make a breakout switch for this and have a switch located elsewhere that's not smart. So anytime I want to manually push the button, the lamp will go on and off. Now this isn't for a smart bulb, this is for a regular bulb. If it was a smart bulb when we killed the power, the smart bulb will lose connection. Another annoying thing, you have to hook it back up and all that stuff. So we're gonna make the breakout switch to make a dumb button to turn this on and off. So let's design it or hack it. Okay, first thing we need to do is open this thing up. And to do so, let's take our knife and work around the glue seam on the back of it. it. Takes a little patience, but once you get it to open up enough to get a screwdriver in it and start prying on it and working your way around, it will crack open and we can expose the electronics inside. This is a switch we're gonna to connect to. But to do so, we need to expose the solder points on the back side of the board. To do this, I'm gonna use my Dremel to cut away a portion of the back, being very careful not to nick the circuit board. I'm gonna use my pliers to finish off the cut just to make sure I don't hit the circuit board. Now that I got the contacts exposed, I'm gonna attach the male portion of this JST connector to the switch. First, we want to tin the ends of the connector wire with some solder. Now that the wires are tinned, we can melt them right into the button contacts on the back of the circuit board. Now we need to clear out a little spot for the wire to come through the housing. We'll do that with our Dremel.
Now that we have clearance for the wire, let's use our trusty super glue to glue the electronics back into the housing. Now we can use some hot melt glue to fill the hole we cut in the back and also provide some strain relief for our new wire. Here's our finished switch with the new breakout wire. I think it came out pretty good. Okay, so let's do a little demonstration to show you how this works. Um, so I'm going to plug this into our little breakout here. This will represent the switch, which will be wherever we want it to be. And you don't have to worry about this that much because it's 3.5 volts or something like that. It's the microcontroller side of the switch, not the actual high voltage side of the switch. So um, we'll just leave that there. Make sure they're not touching each other at this point. I'm going to plug this into the outlet. All right. So there's a little blue light there. And then when I touch these together, it goes off. I think you heard that click. Touch them together, comes back on them together off okay so that's the thought so now all we have to do is design the switch holder and all that so let's design it Okay, here's the part off the printer. I actually didn't mean to print it on a raft, but I did because that was the settings for my last print. But I have tree supports inside of it and let's see how this thing comes apart. Probably looks pretty good. Actually, tree supports in a raft. I really like that. The raft kind of holds onto the tree supports, so. I cleaned up the printed parts a bit and hit them with some spray paint, and here's how they came out.
This is the lamp I'm going to control with the switch we made. You can probably see why I designed it the way I did with the bump pattern and the colors and all. Um, I just wanted it to match the lamp a little bit. But before we can install the switch, we need a control cable that goes from the smart switch we made to the dumb button that we made. So to do that, I chose some lightweight speaker wire. And I really chose that mainly because it'll blend in really well with the wire that is on the lamp. But it doesn't have to be anything heavy. It just controls uh, or just carries a 3.5 volt um, signal. So I want it to be about as long as the cord here. So I'm just gonna use that to figure out how long I want it. There we go. Cut it to length, and now let's install the button. First, I'm going to pull the wire apart at the end and strip both sides. Now I'm going to tend the end of each wire with some solder. I'm going to cut the legs on the button to about half the length they originally were. Now I'm just going to bend the other legs back and forth until they break off. Now I'm going to tend both legs of the button with some solder. Now that the ends of the wires and the legs are tinned, we can just melt a wire to each leg. On the other end of the wire, I'm going to crimp on a JST connector. So before I can do that, we need to split the wire and strip about two millimeters of housing off of each wire. I'll select the two conductor JST connector from my kit and crimp an end on each wire. and slide them into the plastic plug. Now we can assemble it onto the lamp wire. First we'll put the button cap onto the button. Insert that into the button housing. We'll insert the lamp wire into the back of the housing and we'll hold it all together by installing the back and screwing it in place. Now let's secure the switch wire to the lamp wire. I didn't have any zip ties around, so I just used a twist tie. Should work just as well. Now 
Now that we have our switch installed on the lamp, we can test this thing out. So all we have to do is plug the lamp into the smart switch. I already have this on the network. And plug our control cable, breakout cable, into our switch. And now I can control my lamp with smart device, because it's on my network, like normal on a smart switch. But if I don't want to fiddle with all that, I can just press my breakout button and turn it on and off. So I hope you enjoyed this project. If you did, like and subscribe. Uh, all the materials and files and all that stuff is over on my website at dandesigns3d.com. So you can go check that out and we'll see you in the next project.